of Sandhya Vandana, they don't perform. What is the point in doing all other things when you have missed out on your basic Nitya Karma? So it is so important for us to perform that Nitya Karma. So that was a realization for me. Luckily for me, you know, I had my Upanayana you know, personally myself. Uh, by the way, we have not introduced ourselves. I am conscious of that. We will come to the introduction part. Uh, my name is Bhaskar. And uh, uh, I let uh, Muji introduce himself. I am uh, like you, so I am no different person or anything like that. He is a learned person. I am just a normal guy like you and me, and we are all together. I am just interested in this, that's all. Nothing else, you know, otherwise I don't have any special qualification or anything like that. Uh, I had my open item uh, when I was in grade 10, I think, right back in India. This must have been in the 70s sometimes, right? 73, 74 time. So I, I was somehow fortunate, I think uh, there is some blessing from somebody that from that day to now I am performing my Sandhya Vandana. So I really feel blessed because it's very easy to give this up, right? Somehow I get a stuck to me, you know. So it is good for me that I am doing this and I feel I attribute a lot of my uh, what I am today. Because it is, a, it is a, so, so much ingrained in me. So, I felt good on that day when Swamiji said that you have to do it. So, it is a positive reinforcement that I should continue to do it, right? But I also thought maybe I should share the message with the broader people. So, in 2007, we had a similar workshop in my house in the basement. And we had a similar gathering like people like me. So, it was a successful event because a lot of people uh, benefited from it. They came to know about it. And uh, that time, instead of Raghuji, we had another priest uh, who was available at that time. Uh, his name was Raja Vadya. He was a Vedic scholar as well. So, he he was the one who was actually doing all the Vedic part of Sadhya. And then I was just a tool facilitating it around. So, the feedback from that session was good. So, we have used a lot of the materials from that session. So the reason why we thought of this is, you know, today people go to workshops outside for yoga, people go to uh, Isha yoga, people go for, uh, uh, you know, art of living, people go for a lot of other things outside, right? Um, some others go for other kinds of stress management lessons and things like that. So, what is, the, you know, what I realized was that, you know, this Sandhya Vandana that has been given to us, passed down to us by our forefathers, is an excellent technique and a tool and a ritual, all combined in one, so powerful. And uh, so it's so powerful in the sense, for example, which grade are you studying? Uh, grade 6. Grade 6, right? So you are studying grade 6. So, so do you want to study very easily and then score more marks? Yes? You want to have fun while studying your lessons or what, or even while playing? Yes? So, for children like him, you know, Sandhya Vandana gives a lot of benefits, right? You know, from, so what I am trying to say is for small children, it gives a lot of benefits with which you can actually shine in school, you can do very well in school, you can score more marks, you can learn a lot, you can have fun, you can be happy, right? For elders like us, we may have a lot of other problems we are dealing with in day to day life. For us, it is an excellent way to de stress and uh, sharpen our intellect and become more spiritual. Right? So, it is an excellent tool. So, in respect to your age, you know, they say, I, the other day I heard a, a lecture from somebody that, uh, you know, at least, how many of you have been in Italy? Many of you have been in Italy, right? At least, the beauty of Italy is. Idli is the only food in the whole world. Idli is the only food in the whole world which can be given from somebody who is age 2 or even less to 95, 96 years old. Everybody can eat it without any health problems. In fact, it is very good for all this age. Now. Many other foods cannot be given. If it can be given to the elderly people, the 2 year old cannot digest it. If 2 year old food, the elderly will not like it. So, this is the only food that can be given. So, this Sadhya Vandana is like Right from the time of Upanayana to very old age, this benefits. The, the benefits will be different and appropriate for the right age. Right? So that is what I am trying to say.
Now this is a beautiful treasure that is there. It's a beautiful treasure that is there. We are ignoring. We are ignoring. It has been given to you, we are ignoring. Why ignoring? We have to create the awareness so that we can actually benefit from it. Right? We can benefit from it to live happily, to live healthily, to live with bliss, to be really blessed, to live stress free and all that. I can keep on adding. So why not be ignored? So we should actually spread the message about the, the power of this. Now, as I said, I have no qualification to do this. I am just being a tool and trying to facilitate. And uh, Raghuji is the scholar and you have uh, Ram Vishnu Bhatt and Vijna. They are all there. They are the experts. But we are there just to make things happen so we can get together. Now, I want to make that very clear. I am not talking with any sense of authority or anything like that. I am only sharing it. That has been clear, right? Now, anything we do, we have to seek Guru's blessings. So, we started obviously within our mind with uh, His Holiness, praying Him that this effort has to be fruitful and people should benefit from it. And we are doing with a sense of um, humbleness and uh, prayer and uh, respect to Guru. Now, there is another Guru that from whom I have heard 10 lectures on Sandhya in Chennai. He is uh, Swami Paramanakaranda. He regularly gives Bhagavad Gita lectures in Chennai. He is a disciple of uh, Swami Dayanandu Saraswati and uh, Swami Chimayananda and so on. They come in that. Uh, so, he is a Vedic scholar and, and says, so he has given 10 lectures on Sandhya So we call him, we have, I had the benefit of uh, some association with him along with my family and, and uh, apparently Raghuji also knows him. So we spoke with him two days ago and said we are doing this and we want to get your blessings so that we can do this. Please bless all of us. So you all have his blessings from that call that we made two days ago. And uh, he said, I asked him, is there any advice you have for us as to what we should focus on and all that. He told us that focus on the power of Gayatri Mantra. Please let the people know the power of Gayatri So the Gayatri Mantra is, is extremely powerful. Right? Now, they say that as, how many of you here have Uparayana done? All of you, right? Now, let us pick one of the eight boys. Who said, you said that you are in grade 6. Can you say everyone here? You can, right? Come. Come here. This is the workshop. This workshop is not a lecture, right? It is participating. So we'll start with this guy. Give him a big hand. Yes. Yes. Say a few are in the mic. Like so a few are in. Vishwa Vishwa Krokra Kanda Shreya Sharma Am Asmi Am Bo Abhi Vade. When we participate, you will see how we are going to invite you to participate. Right? You will see it step by step. Now, this boy was bold enough to come and say Sabiwari in a condensed way. Now, we are all supposed to be practicing one of the Vedas. For example, my Abhiwari, Sabiwari, Vasishta, Mitra, Varna, Mohinya, Triyachaya, Pravaranta, Mohinya, Mokraha, Abhastha, Mosukraha, Ejushaka, Adhyayi. Yajur Shaka Adhyay, I am supposed to be practicing Yajur Veda, right? That is why, that is why I have my Yajur Upagatma tomorrow, like many of you. So, we are all supposed to practice the Vedas, but practically today are we able to practice? How many of you here are practicing Vedas? Like we say in the middle, there is one person here, Ramesh, who has come here, Ramesh and Radha. So, we are not able to practice Vedas like they used to do in the past. So, what they say is, at least you say Rudra and Shabha, right? At least as a, as a the Rudra Japa is supposed to be at least if you, you cannot say the whole of Ayurveda, at least say one small part of it, right? To say Rudra and Japa, what does our Swami, Kanchi Mat Swami said? You have to do Sandhyam. So Sandhyam and then Rudra Japa. If you cannot do Rudra Japa, at least do Gayatri. You know, that is Gayatri Chandasamata, it is the mother of Veda. So Gayatri Chiba has got the potency 
of the entire Vedas. So at least chant Gayatri Mantra. Right? So if you cannot chant even Gayatri Mantra, they say that you can chant Om. That is kind of the so it's Om or Gayatri Mantra or Buddha Sandhya Mantra and Buddha Rutra Japa and then you can expand from it. So you can do anywhere you want. There are there are varieties of they have given you a different scale to choose whatever fits you, right? Anyway, coming to the point, this is the reason why we thought of essentially to spread the message of the importance of Sandhya Mantra and get the benefit of the potency of Gayatri Mantra and also the various gross and subtle benefits of this ritual called Sandhya Mantra for the benefit of everybody irrespective of age, right from the time of Upanayanam, right to the time after your session as Siddhava Shekhar and all that. Like it benefits in different ways to the people. So in terms of the workshop agenda and structure, uh, what we are doing is now, it's a 10 step workshop, right? Step 1 and 2 has been done pretty much now, right? Yanadhi Dhyana and Guru Dhyana we have completed. Some introduction was given, there is a little bit more introduction that the Ramuji will give. Then we are going to go through a short group activity. We are going to divide it into small groups and this activity on the benefits of Sandhya We are going to brainstorm. Then we have got Sandhya part 1 and 2, right? And then there is a break. What we might do with the break and uh, whether some refreshments will be given, don't ask me, I don't know. There will be a break, at least it will be a bio break, right? After the break, there is part 3 and then there is another group activity. Second group activity actually, it's a uh, group activity 3 but it's actually 2 and 3. And then we will have Sandhya in part 4 and then we will have question and answer, right? And afterwards if we have time, there are some videos we can play and all that, you will see that later. So that's kind of the workshop structure. And when I say workshop, as I said, it's not lecture, you are going to participate, and that's the reason why we call it workshop. Okay? Any questions on this so far? Okay? Very good. Now, uh, going back to the uh, workshop materials, we are not giving you any material here. No printed material we give it here because we are going green, right? So, no printouts. We are going to email you the materials of this workshop, this presentation, the actual Sandhya Mantra script so that you can use that to perform this Sandhya Mantra, all the steps. Uh, instead of using a book, it's a one page, you can keep it on the floor and you can do it, right? And uh, we are going to also post the video of this on YouTube in different sections so you can actually use that as a, you can play it and then do it, you can do it so we are trying to get more out of this. Uh, so for that reason, you know, some of you may be captured on the video. Uh, I hope you don't have any objection, but we will try to keep it minimum and uh, try to cover only here, not, not you, but uh, in case accidentally we cover you, you know, you'll just be aware of it. And uh, that's the workshop materials. That's going to be, everything is going to be in soft form. So to enable us to send you those soft copies, we have circulated a, a pad with uh, your name and email address. So we will not use it for anything other than this workshop, so don't worry about any considerations for you know, we will use it for something else, no we won't use it, we will just use it for this workshop. So please, if you have not filled in your name and email address, please do so. And uh, if the thing is unplayed, I don't know who is got it, if somebody is here, you have got it, so make sure that they are there. Workshop objectives. So we have said many of these things are need. So first thing is to raise awareness of this pressure. I call this a pressure because it is there. You know, it is there for us to read as much as we can from it. Second is, it is a prerequisite for pursuit of any other knowledge, right? Whether it is chanting of Vedas or Vedic Vedantic studies or even studies for children. This is a very good prerequisite. So, we, it's important for us to learn the prerequisite first before we go. You know, you all know that we have to do an MBA, we have to do a GMAT, right? So, everything has got a prerequisite or qualification, pre-qualification. The pre qualification for other living uh, persons. Third one, to share some of the benefits because everybody is interested in so what is there in it for me, right? If you want me to do this, why I should do this? What is there in it for me? So there is benefits. Quite frankly, if this is a Nitya Karma, as Raghuji will explain later, you are not supposed to expect any benefit. You are supposed to do it in a Nishkamya way. Nishkamya way means without any, expecting any benefits, you have to do it just like that. But still, we are all very materialistic in our thinking, so we want to know what is the benefit, so we will we'll talk about that. Lastly, Raghuji is going to walk us through the entire 
ritual from step 1 to step 25 with mantras you chant it back and with me and he's going to show you the exact uh, physical aspect of it so you will all see and it will be captured on youtube so it can be used for others hopefully the, the video will come okay and the audio will come okay and we will see how it comes out lastly to discuss any questions you may have so is there anything else missing or anybody has any questions at this stage sounds good marvelous excellent okay so with that um, we will start about the agenda. So the context of uh, Sadhya, uh, I think I request now Raghuji to explain the context in terms of, you know, for everything we have uh, terms of reference, right? So if, if somebody, if I tell my son, you have to perform Sadhya, he asks the question, where is it said? Who said it shall be done? Show me. So this is the show me. So as you know, our Vedas are very unique in the sense we say, um, you know, Sruddhis Sruddhi Puranam Alem Prasalem. So, before Sruddhi, you know, we, we had uh, Vedas and the revelations, right? So, the Rishis wrote it, it came directly from God, right? So, the uh, context of Sandhya, you know, Raghuji will tell us where is, it, where is it quoted in the Vedas that we should perform it, etc. Without any delay, Raghuji, please introduce yourself. Thank you, Master. So, I have Raghu Rangadhar. And the next few of us will be talking to you about the significance of Sandhya Vedana practice. I don't know, it's not just a ritual, it's a very important discipline. Um, I was born into a um, Vedic family where um, my grandfather, great grandfather, they were all um, Nitya Aumasanas, then Nitya Antimotris, and uh, they did the, um, one of the greatest of uh, sacrifices on Yaga called the Soma Yaga. So, because I was born into that, I got the little bit of uh, knowledge from them. It was just a coincidence. It was not my own effort because it was only my because of my birth. So, yep. when I was uh, six years old, I don't know how many years or more than six. I think is anybody less than six years? I don't think so. So, when I was six years old. The Upanayana um, ceremony was performed, and uh, right after uh, I got uh, initiated into the Vedic teaching by uh, by the uh, Veda, Veda Guru and Sri Vidya Guru, Sri Vimashana and Saraswati Swami, who was also my poor version of my grandfather. So it was just that from six years I, I started into this in his lap, I would say, because uh, sometimes I would play in his lap. When he was teaching me the Sandhya Mantra, that was the first mantra he taught me, was the Sandhya Mantra. And uh, some who would ask whether, uh, whether somebody who is six years old, is, is, are they capable of learning all this? People will think that um, people become capable only when they become like, uh, they go to grade 8, grade 10, or they are like 14, 15 years old. But actually it's not true. Today you can see kids who are two years or three years old, they can operate the iPad like anything. Like they, they are, it's so amazing how they can use the iPad. They can use technology. So the children are all brilliant. But who is stopping them? It is the parents. The parents do not know how brilliant their own children are. They think that no, you are too young to even know about it. If a child asks, Question to the father or mother. Many times they say, No, no, you are too late for this. So they don't give an appropriate answer also. So that is how I started. And uh, then once I started this, the uh, one of the uh, RNA code which gives the uh, context and the uh, source for doing the Sandhya 
just that chanting, enchanted me. And then I became so much into this. Uh, I wanted to know much more in, in depth about the Sandhya Vandana ritual and also why it should be done. Just like for our um, physical health, we have to take bath every day. We need to brush our teeth. Then we need to eat the right food. Why are we doing all that? Only by doing all that, we can keep our physical body in good shape. That's what we are doing. But it's not everything is physical. Physical body and physical well-being is only maybe 20%. In fact, one of the reports in the USA, when they were thinking about the gun culture, they said that the biggest problem of all these killings and all the problems in the society is because of the mental issues and mental problems. So we totally ignore the mental aspects of our life. So this Sandhya Vandana, what it does, it makes us spiritually and mentally very active. It makes our brain receptive to any new knowledge and learning. So that once we get the Sandhya Vandana, our intellect is so sharpened that if you go to a school, even whether you are grade 2 or grade 8 or you are the university, you can quickly catch whatever the teacher or more, you can become much more than that person. How? Only when you have such mental powers. If you do not have mental powers, it is not possible. And how do we get that mental power? We don't have to read mentally. Vedas are there. It, it, it guides us to every step in the life. From the beginning, from the small steps. Every, every aspect is also we are given as uh, name also. When somebody is born, we say there are uh, karmas like Jaga Karma, Nama Karma, even a name is a karma, Nama Karma. Then Anna Prashna. So like that, Uparayana is one karma. That we get this Yagno uh, Pavinam of the Puna. Where at that time, then the next question is who should do this Yagno Pavinam of the Uparayana? Next step. So who should do? It is everybody who wants to lead a disciplined life. Only when somebody leads a disciplined life, they can become successful. So if you have to lead a disciplined life, we need the Yagyopavita. So when we get the Yagyopavita, it says, when anybody human being is born, they are born as a Shudra. A Shudra means, Swachanta Chari means, one who lives an indisciplined life. One who does whatever his mind tells him to do. If, if he says, okay, today I want to do this, he just he does that. So what? There is nothing like any discipline or what? They have no structure. So all of us first are born as Shudra. So I am very making it very clear to everybody. So that don't, because as Hindus, people immediately think about the Varnashrama, Brahmana, Vaishya, Kshatriya and Shudra. So first everybody is born as a Shudra. Irrespective of how they are born. Then once they are born, once the Yoga Vita is done, they become what we call Vija or the second Janma or the twice born. So you get one more life. So what is that life? So for that life, it is a disciplined life. And we want to go into the next stage. We have to finally attain the Purusharthas like Dharma, Artha, Kama, Moksha. So for doing all that, we need the Sikyo Bhavita and then immediately they start with the Sandhya Vandana. The reason they would say before this, like when somebody is 6 years old or 8 years or 10 years, whatever the age, that the parents will decide the time for the Uparayana based on the capacity of that person. So normally some would become capable when they are 6 years, some can become capable when they are 8 years. But 100% they will become capable of that when they become like at least 10 years old. So the parents and also when you talk to others, 
you should let everybody know about this that there is a time why there is a time because when they learn the sandhya mantra when they start chanting the gayatri mantra then they sharpen their intellect and they become receptors for knowledge whether it is scientific knowledge or spiritual knowledge or any knowledge they become receptors so i was telling you that the uh, the significance from the sandhya mantra from the veda which is in the yajur veda there is a called taitriya aranyam part so i am going to just chant the taitriya aranyam for one minute because when um, this is when i chanted this taitriya aranyam i got very much excited myself that yes this is the such a great uh, pressure our vedas are so scientific which many of us do not know but uh, it, it is very scientific it is very logical and just reading that in fact it starts very nicely because i am giving you all this basic uh, context because when we are going into the next stages i will not be again explaining that's why i am trying to give you some context what it means it starts with normally it starts with the story and the story will be in a very loyal level sense in terms of a loyal level means i am talking about it will say you pray to god or you tell to fight you kill the demon uh, that is a fight between devas and asuras you can start with that then i wouldn't say gradual that is a um, i would say you can call it a problem or um, it's a challenge is it may take us to the highest stage of arpanyam to the vedantic stage every mantra when we are going to chant in the uh, sandhya mantra you will start with this you will say i want this you uh, uh, remove all sins i want to help give me money give me wealth give me children all this will be chanting first then finally it is like make me so pure that i become one with you and uh, i am the boss it goes to that stage so it will be every every uh, chanting you do you will have you will see that even in uh, when you do uh, the sri mudra mudra is also like that it starts with the small it's uh, it starts with the nature it starts with individual then it goes to the parmatma level so i just uh, you should be aware of this so you do not don't get surprised that you are uh, we are shifting gears of nothing it is not we are shifting gears the vedas shift gears like that like they go from start and push up then they again come so it is a, it is just that's the nature so i will just uh, one minute i will chant this uh, mantra which is the one which says why why we need to do sandhya mantra and it also talks about the power of gayatri so we all know everybody does gayatri mantra if you ask any hindu at least one that is a great thing is at least they will know the gayatri mantra but they may not know the meaning and they may not know the source for gayatri mantra so this is the source which is from the taitriya aranyam om rakshatu sihava Water in his 
and chants Gayatri Mantra once. What happens to that Gayatri in that water? It becomes Vajra. Ta Apo Vajri Bhutva. That becomes Vajra. Tani Raksharapun says so. This, that is a story where the Sankhavari is attacked. So these Brahmanas chanting once, they do the Anyam and they throw the water to the sun in the direction of the sun and then it says after doing that immediately they are vanished so the, the power of two things is done here power of the Gayatri is established then it also says Udhyantam Astam Yantam Aladityam Avityatam Udhyantam means during sunrise Astam Yantam is during sunset Avityam is the sun god Avityatam Avityatam means pray during, so you pray to the sun god in the morning and the evening Urban Ram, Maro, Vidwan, Sakalam, Hadramasude, it means somebody does, he gets all the Hadram means all the good things. Every good thing, every human being has, as well as you get it. So, is it not that simple for us to get good things just by doing Sandhyavan? So, that is, it is said by the Vedas. That is why, as Pastor was telling when uh, Kanji Paramacharya and also the Shingeri Paramacharya uh, also has given a uh, speech about the uh, uh, Sandhya Vajra. Why do they give so much importance? Is because the Vedas give so much importance to that uh, Gayatri Mantra. So then, after this, we will start with the uh, leave to uh, Pastor. And then, thank you, Rabbiji. Uh, we will have Rabbiji come back again. But uh, you know, the feeling I get is. You go to a room in your house. The room is dark. Right? What is your first reaction? What is your first reaction? Huh? You're scared. Okay, what can you do to remove the scare? Huh? Turn on the light. When you turn on the light, you know very well that the darkness is removed. Now, some of you may understand why the darkness is removed when you push something somewhere. Right? When you push a button, the darkness is suddenly removed. Some of us really understand what is exactly happening. If I am an engineer, an electrical engineer, I really understand what is happening. When I press the button, there are two contacts coming together and a circuit is completed. The current flows into the bulb, the bulb flows and then the bulb emits light and then the darkness is removed. This understanding, because of our knowledge of electrical engineering, I can appreciate a little bit more. But who cares? Who cares? You press the button, your light comes. In many ways, chanting Gaya is like that. What Prabhuji said is the electrical engineer's version. He gave the details, where it is said, what are the details, the power, etc. We, it's good to know that. However, we may not need to, so I don't want you to get the feeling, oh, this is all very complex. It's not for me. I'm not going to get the benefit of guy who's grab and run away from it. Just like you're comfortable pressing the button and getting rid of darkness in the room and using the light to study a book or do whatever you want to do without really having absolutely any clue of how this is happening, that the darkness is removed. We can actually chant Gayatri Mantra. If it has been properly initiated to you through the opening of the ritual, and get the benefit. Understanding why it is happening, where it is said, what is the how the that is that is the next step. Right? But the point here is to be understood in that context so that you don't get scared of all these background details. And you don't have to think that I need to know everything. It's good to know. Please pursue that further. No questions. However, don't get overwhelmed or intimidated by it and not even pursue. That's my, my humble uh, view. And any mantra chanting has got a lot of different uh, power. What do you mean by power? He said the guy of the mantra is very powerful. Right? What do you mean by power? Anybody? What do you mean by power? What do you mean by power? This is the workshop, I said, no, I'm not going to keep quiet, just lecture, yes? 
energy you have to to do anything you get more energy right that is one form of power so power is a very relative word you say this guy is a, is a very powerful man sir svb is a very powerful man he can be a trustee what do you mean by that he can take decisions he can right we go to the company and say he is a very powerful person he can hire and fire and he can do things he can offer you more rewards he can offer you a higher salary so power is a very relative word depends on what the context is right when you say guy people are very powerful in this particular case what we mean is it is this power is going to help you as an individual the problem with this is you as an individual you could be old you could be young you could be learned you could be ignorant you could be happy you could be sad you are talking about an individual which is a bundle of emotions bundle of knowledge etc so whether it is for this small boy who is in grade 6 or it is for me or it is for the elderly gentleman that the power is useful in relevant ways for the respective age for the respective state of mind etc etc so it's a very universal power it is a very universal power what do i mean by universal power it is adaptable to give the benefits for the individual depending on what state of mind they are if a young boy for pursuit of knowledge in the school as ravi ji pointed out the mind becomes very receptive you know that the young children are like sponge whatever they learn they can absorb with the diet and the mantra and the mental discipline they are able to do it several times more powerful so that is what meant by the power of diet and mantra so you will, you will really realize the power more we have had some actual exercises of making you realize the power so we'll get to that in short order so without further delay we should uh, get to the group activity first group activity we want to add it yeah just um, i want to also just talk about that before because it gives you a context for for the group activity also um sandhya when we uh, do the worship we worship um, there is a there are some uh, some uh, meanings for the word sandhya because we should know what we are going to do sandhya and mandala the two two mandala means prayer or namaskara which is mandala and the meaning for sandhya is a common meaning which is given as san from sandhi or join it means joining of the night and the day which is the early morning sandhi or noon or the evening so that is sandhi the other meaning for uh, sandhya is samyak dhyayate means always the person who is capable of prayer who is that who is always capable of prayer and who is uh, who we always need to pray that person is the sandhya devi and that sandhya devi because every mantra we are going to chant in future like for sandhya mantra you should understand this whether you are going to uh, invoke the water god apaha you are going to invoke the surya or the sun god you are going to invoke vayu or the air you are going to invoke varuna anything you are going to invoke they are all god gayatri sarthi saraswati or the sandhya devi alone you should remember this very clearly the sankhya devi which is the brahman with maya so brahman is a neutral gender gender and sankhya is feminine so sankhya worship is to worship in the feminine form of the highest in this highest god which is the para brahman highest god which is sankhya devi so do not sankhya devi so here what the gods have been very kind to us normally in a company if you want first you have to go to the pool or park and then officer then you finally go to the sea you cannot directly approach but our basic wish is they have allowed us to go to the highest directly that is the greatest thing greatest thing about sankhya we are not going to the smallest god one god or some gods have only power to 
fulfill this other god. So, how many gods we want to pray? So, the Sandhya Devi is the highest god. That is one thing you have to remember. So, any god we are going, because as I said, the mantra will suddenly go to the highest brother, which is the Sandhya Devi alone. That's why it's called Sandhya Vandana is the worship to the Sandhya Devi who takes three forms. She takes the form of Gagatri in the morning. Then she takes the form of Savitri in the afternoon and Saraswati in the evening. So, Gagatri, Savitri, Saraswati, again, when we are doing the Avaram, we will be using these mantras. Again, they are the Sandhya Devi alone. So, just you have to remember this. Uh, this is just give you a context. Um, if others like who are young, the parents should explain this if it is a difficult concept and we can again go through when we are going to the steps of the Sandhya Thank you, Ruji. Uh, so with that, we are going to make you move a little bit and do some work. So because you have been sitting in a place for a long time. So this is a workshop. So what I would like to do is to uh, uh, go through the uh, specifics of this uh, group activity one. So this group activity, we are going to divide into two groups here, this side, left side, and two groups on the right side, okay? You circle, sit in circles or whatever, and sit facing each other. Um, first thing is, form small groups around, with people around you, discuss the benefits of Sandhya Vandana. So we, some of you said that you are already performing, so you probably have some ideas. So discuss some of the benefits of Sandhya Vandana from your experience, right? What you have been experienced, what you have heard, etc. And then have somebody take notes in your group so that they can talk to the rest of the group. Uh, rest of the group. So that's the third part. And then after you finish, I'm going to start the timer for 10 minutes. So you have 10 minutes to discuss this in your group. And then after that, we are going to see what you found out. And then we will see what, uh, what the Swamiji's say about the benefits or what the benefits really are. Right? Maybe you will, you will cover everything. But if there is something that you haven't really been able to explore, we can certainly bring that up. So now I want you to divide into two groups. So uh, don't make the group too big. So maybe two or three groups here doesn't matter. So you just form quickly. Now, so, so yeah, circles, can, yeah. circles, small circles, circles, please. Small circles of six, seven, eight people. Uh, ladies are included in this, so you can count the circle if you want. But uh, it's mainly for the next. But you know, feel free to do whatever you want. There's a question here. Who we'll answer this?